So in this video, I'm going to show you some of my uh, cool pieces of hardware that I use to create some of my sound effects. And one of them is actually the Open Labs Nico. And uh, I've been using this a lot lately, mainly because um, it opens up a new world for me. I've long, been a long time Mac user and not so much because, you know, oh, you know, I have a Mac, but it's, it's mainly I've just been on, on Logic for, you know, almost 20 years and it's kind of a hard, you know, a few hard habits to break. But one great thing about this uh, is it's actually Windows based and this has a, basically opened up a whole new sonic world for me because there's a lot of really cool interesting plugins and a lot of free plugins that are just very very cool that only run in a, in a Windows based machine. So at the core of that that's what that's what this thing runs but I have you know lots of RAM in here lots of hard drive space so it can handle really big sound files and real high resolution files and I can have some uh, cool real-time control of it uh, you know big giant touch screens these kind of things make life a lot easier and uh, you can you know load pretty much any VST that you want in it and uh, you know basically turn it into a, a hardware piece and uh, that's one of the, one of my getting back to one of my favorite things about alchemy is it's a lot of real time control and this really helps bring all that bring all that to the surface and um, Plenty, like I said, plenty of hard drive space, all these big files and all these big projects and all these big sound effects that I'm making, got no problem saving them off real quick and loading them up and then, then just start manipulating them. I think the next thing uh, that I'm gonna do for the Nico is actually um, put a Kima system on it so I can have Kima in a keyboard. So I think that's gonna be the, the next step for this bad boy right here. Another favorite sound design hardware piece is actually the Roland V-Synth, and I have a long history with the V-Synth. I actually debuted it back in 2003 for Roland. And uh, when Roland first uh, showed me this thing, this was back in 2002, um, the original V-Synth, this is actually the GT, I was really just blown away at the real-time control of it. And uh, the sonic manipulation was you know, like just wow, you know, just incredible. And um, I, I was thinking, I was like, man, you could make some really, really cool sounds on it. And I, I, I looked at it, you know, a lot. It, it can do all the synth synthesizer stuff and things like that. But a combination of, you know, some of the very phrase things that it does where you can just kind of, you know, morph time and, and uh, pitch and stuff in real time and uh, some of the filters and some of the modulation stuff. Uh, it just was like, wow, man, you can make some great stuff. And I've used, I used the vSynth a, a lot on a lot of the previous libraries that I've done and I still use it to this day. Um, and uh, it's actually funny, when I did debut it, I wanted to put a, uh, a sound design element when I did this demo for Roland. And I actually I kind of had I actually kind of had to beg him to be like, please let me put this in. It was just like a simple car crash sound effect. Uh, check this out. This is actually the clip from a uh, from the 2003 NAMM show demoing the original V-Synth and talking about the sound design element of it. Now the V-Synth is also an incredible sound design tool. Here we have a standard car crash effect. Now we're going to add the sideband filter we just heard. And on the second Cosm filter, we're going to add a new distortion model, a uh, distortion amp model, actually. So we'll listen to the sound again. Now, using the time trip pad, we're going to step back through the waveform. Now we're going to mess with it. this so I was back in 2003 and uh, I've had one ever since and uh, like I said it's uh, the only real problems with it it doesn't have like a lot of RAM uh, so you're working with smaller files and, and things like that but you can do a lot with uh, really small files and uh, I like the vocoder and stuff in here and uh, you can check you can see some of the how, how the vocoder works in uh, the monster voices segment And one more piece of cool hardware that I like to use to make sound effects with is actually the Chord Chaos Pad. And this little thing uh, is really cool for making whoosh kind of effects and uh, just, you know, almost kind of cool atmospheric 
droney kind of sounds as well and it's got some cool kind of glitch effects in it uh another real cool thing about i like about this is it can be used as an xy midi controller so i assign a lot of things uh in in like reactor to the xy pad and get some real great uh, manipulation through this and assign some controllers and stuff like that. But the Core Chaos Pad is definitely a little secret weapon um, when it comes to making, you know, really kind of whacked out effects.